I have a rule when I'm using the observatory. Don't start drinking until you're actually taking usable photographs. And I'm drinking, so I'm getting data. I'm going to show you how I set up the Rasa 8 inch to shoot in narrow band, not just the one shot color it's technically designed for. And I'll show you my results. And I'll give you my thoughts about this great new telescope. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. <laughs> So I've got all the main ingredients ready for the Rasa 8, which I want to get set up and I want to get first light on. But as you know, I've been trying to get the Hyperstar filter draw system working. And of course, I also need a guide solution as well. Now there is a Rasa 8 guide rail available. It wasn't available when I started this process, so I've just got a little ZWO mini guide scope. And from Star Arizona, we have a very small one millimeter thread adapter to make the draw system work. I'm not naked, it's uh, just hot, but it looks like it's actually going to be clear. So, we might have first light on the Rust 8 tonight. I expect there'll be problems, there's always problems when you use something for the first time, so. Okay, so problem number one is that normally with the Rust 11 you've got this little space over here to get back focal distance. That's not going to work with the ZWO 1600. So you have to take this plate off and put this one from Star Arizona on and make sure the ring is um, upwards and then screw that back in. And then the ring that's normally on the 1600 has to be taken off and that'll sit in really, really flush with the Hyperstar drawer, like so. Now the problem with that, once it is flush, is that the hook to the drawer is hidden underneath the camera itself. So you've got to get underneath the camera to pull out the magnetic clip or you'll have to use something to wedge it open from the corner, like a screwdriver or a fingernail. Um, I believe there's a modified version where you have more of a handle on, on this so you can pull it out that way. But you could probably weld something on or do something yourself there too. So I've got the new guide scope on and it's doing great. You know, total error is really low, like much lower than my other guide scope. And you can see the stars are a little bit out of focus. That's not such a bad thing. The um, full width half maximum that PhD2 uses to calculate uh, is based on this uh, peak here. So it really doesn't matter if it's out of focus, it will find the middle. And that makes it pretty easy for it to, to get to. But the data, look at what's coming in. Oh my God. Beautiful frame. And the detail's pretty good, though I did notice that the stars, are, the small stars anyway, are a little blocky. So a bit of drizzling in your post-processing will help that. Um, but the detail is there, it's fantastic. So I think this confirms the 1600... Oh. New subscriber. Thanks for subscribing, Daniel Rivet. Yeah, I think this confirms that the 1600mm and the Rasa 8 do work together. A little bit of... Uh, Jiggery pokery. Oh, I had the weirdest dream. I dreamt that the weather actually cleared up. I had a full awesome image run on one target for over two hours oh my god
review. I'll go through a few things. Uh, the first thing is the really short back focal distance on the Rasa. It's not really designed for all cameras and all image trains in mind. The combination that I came up with here was an example of what you can do if you're really careful with getting a camera that will support that modest image circle and shallow back focal distance. The Hyperstar filter draw adjustments cost me about $78, which I think it felt a little bit expensive, like it's a one millimeter spacer. and um, that and the the back plate 78 bucks plus the cost of postage to australia almost 150 dollars just for that adapter but it does open up a whole world of possibilities for the rasa 8. i didn't find any reason to modify the draw at all in order to pull it out um, some people say you can use a bit of tape to pull it out uh, i found just hooking my fingernail in the edges and pulling it out just worked fine so i don't think there's any reason to spend any extra money there. You do need beta high speed filters. I haven't actually tried F2 with filters that aren't correctly shifted for the slight shift in bandpass, uh, but they do recommend using those two inch F2 beta high speed filters and they have worked exceptionally well for me, which I think you can see in the results anyway. It is a casual scope, like it's probably not on the more serious ends of the Rasas, like the 11 and the 36, but it is really capable and it's actually really, really light. It's something I would highly recommend for star parties, not only because you can do images quickly, but it's really, really portable as well. A few of you mentioned in the ZWO 1600mm video I did about the fact that I didn't mention the reflection issue, and that is a real issue, and that's something I didn't really pick up on until recently. Uh, you can see the square diffraction spikes coming off really bright stars. It doesn't really make much of a difference in what I did here. Although if you do zoom in, I don't think it's necessarily under sampling causing that blockiness, but the brightness and the flooding of that light at f2 is causing tiny little squarish patterns around the star, and that can make the star sort of blocky and square looking. But with drizzle and with morphological transformation, that can really be negated in post-processing anyway. Remember with Hyperstar and with uh, F2 Rasa imaging, you do need to flip the image. The image that you're getting back is a mirror image of reality. So flip the image before you share it on social media and look like an idiot, which I've done. Other really great things I like about this scope, especially with the setup I tested last night, I didn't see any vignetting. I didn't see any warping of the stars in the corners at all, and I'll try and flash those up so you can see in closer detail. And I will give you a link to the full size image that uh, doesn't have final sharpening or anything like that. So you can just see a mostly unprocessed image. It is a combination of all the narrowband colors in the Hubble palette, but I know a few of you will just want to look at the setup and look at the stars, my stars close up, the corners close up, and make that judgment for yourself. But I think you'll see, considering I did no post-processing to fix any sort of vignetting or anything like that at all, it actually came out really nicely. Do I need two Rasas? Um, probably not. My intention was to get this so I could do the review for you guys and be one of the first people to image the Carina Nebula. The best target in the sky with some of the newest equipment and it's something I really enjoyed doing. I'm, I might sell it but I kind of don't want to now because everything's set up and works really well and there's all these summer targets coming over now with the Milky Way and I think I might just keep smashing out some of these photos and then, um, then maybe I'll think about whether I should keep the 8 or not. But I'll definitely keep the 11 because I really like the extra focal length and, and I can use all my cameras on it too. For the price point, the 8 is really, really good, especially if you're considering getting into F2 imaging. Also, I'd like to shout out Trevor from Astro Backyard. He recently posted an image of the Carina Nebula, which he got from only 10 degrees away from the equator in the Northern Hemisphere from Costa Rica. I was really impressed to see the level of signal he got from the Northern Hemisphere. Now that says something about the fact that Trevor could do an image like this in 10 minutes of exposures, which is um, remarkable, but it also says something about the Carina Nebula and just what an amazing target it is. And finally, this video is not sponsored, but I would like to thank Bintel as always, because they do help me out with a lot of this stuff, especially the guide scope and the adapters and things like that. But also High Point Scientific. Uh, I normally link to Amazon affiliate links down in the description, but I'll probably start doing High Point Scientific as well because they've got an affiliate program and, and it really helps the channel and funds my chronic alcohol problem. And of course, thank you to Celestron. Thank you for letting me Q-jump and get this amazing telescope 
so I can have a play with it. And looking forward to coming over to New York on their behalf for Neef. I know a few of you in the comments have said uh, you'll come up and say hello, so I'm really looking forward to, to meeting some of you guys as well. And I think that's about it for me. I need to get some sleep. So remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.